okay so the recording has started so uh, yeah i think if you if you guys have any question from the previous sessions on cicd uh, feel free to gather them around and i i can uh, actually answer them while uh, right now or uh, at the end of the session so feel free to actually interrupt me if you have questions on any part of the presentation so yeah okay uh, i'll share my screen shortly okay okay so can you guys see my screen okay okay thank you thank you so all right so we will be uh, today the session will be about the uh, CD best practices i i guess uh, maybe some of you might have um, might have been familiar with CI CD pipelines or uh, previously in your work or has some projects or some of you might actually be getting started or just got to know it so this is just the basics in mind that is created so it it's like essential moving forward on your uh, on your projects the CI CD practices are essential because uh, you are getting ready for a job level for a job so yeah basically uh, this is essential for the employers to actually see that you are competent in uh, scalable uh, and other types of practices on CICD and building so as I, so as I told you earlier, I am Shamil. I'll be starting the introductions. So, yeah. So, as you previously know, uh, the CICD means continuous integration. The continuous in the integration part means like you are basically building always. So, by building, I mean pushing codes. So, also when you push codes, those things could be kept track of. So, that would be git or some kind of version control system the most popular one is like github so basically you'll be push, pushing your course to github uh, through time so it grows through time this is called continuous integration the actual thing you are building would be continuous integration the delivery part is like you deliver the package the software and deliver it to I, either the end users or anyone that actually wants to see your product or your work so yeah we'll talk about more on this on detail on docker part and everything so that's basically it the delivery part is for either testing pro production or or even development so those are the things so we'll also talk about ci cd based practices what are the good ways to uh, enhance the visibility of your projects that a project that stands out as opposed to just working on a project and it is this is that so basically how to make it better like these are the easy and entry parts so yeah so i wanted to actually go along with the code uh, so if anyone have a question or anything you can interrupt me so i wanted to actually uh, show you the codes while we are doing that but i think it proved impossible for that but uh, on on the first step on project setup so the first thing you have to do when when you are building any uh, digital project or writing a code is like create and initialize your repository uh, that or probably clone those repo repository if it was made uh, online or on github so you can clone this locally or on any machine and start working on that so i'll show you every step uh, 
so the second step would be to set up the project that you are currently working on and the python project structure that we are going to go about is would be a simple project that have like that says hello worlds hello world as before so as you are uh, as you all know uh, probably familiar been familiar with if you are running any python projects there are requirement to text files that actually lists all the requirements that were available so yeah and also pushing is the main part so uh, if anyone has uh, any questions okay sorry about that okay so the next part would be to create a workflow directory i'll show you this once but uh, follow along until it's a really small slide so we'll come back to it later so uh, i wanted to actually get you familiar with before i got into hands-on practical working so workflow directory means a github whenever you actually push a code to a github so GitHub spins up a machine to actually deploy your code to whatever you are you are working or whatever you want. So, for example, it could be for if anyone is pushing a code to the main. So it would be like whenever whenever there is a push to code on a, on the main. So the the there would be some kinds of testing involved. So you want to run some tests. So that that would be. Uh, a simple github workflow on the test pipeline so like the next the next step would be to configure the ci pipeline the continuous integration so define it so basically uh, on github slash workflows and ci ci dot yaml directory so those uh, ci dot yaml file shows what will happen in a step-by-step -step process so you have to actually create a yaml file on github workflows directly so and the next thing is as i as i said earlier it would be to push a code to the main branch so it spins up uh, uh, deployment so yeah the is triggers any any push changes to the main or to the repository would actually trigger the ci pipeline so and you can actually check the results so we'll be checking it shortly so we will also be familiar with docker i'll show you how a simple docker that actually runs so i'll demo you just about now so yeah so yeah these are the commands i think uh, you should all be familiar with so from working directory copy i think most of them are uh, self-explanatory so yeah you should actually start from there and like when you get advanced i think it could be easier uh, so the best practices uh, are uh, frequent commits yeah like basically any change you made should be committed so uh, don't wait un until you got a perfect thing so it wouldn't make sense to actually it doesn't show you how you project or how you code evolves so the good thing about uh, git and commit history is it shows the evolution of software code so if you are shipping one big code or one giant changes to github it might not be apparent for anyone looking at your code so have a precise uh, plan in mind actually have a precise task in mind then execute that then you can even uh, have a clear commit history so the thing about commits uh, message i mean commits message so the thing about commit message is if you have a very large project it's hard to describe on commit message so commit message when you see them are simple so it would be very hard on you to explain it on a single line or a couple of words on commit history so to make that make a frequent commit commit that's that would be i think uh, a, a great thing to start with so the next one is automated tests and linting so one of the things uh, is 
not everybody can on on the work environment uh, or any projects uh, that you you might have take on uh, not everyone has the capability to deploy or push a code to the main part so there are reviewers that your code should be reviewed before it is being uh, it's being passed through to the production environment so automated tests are needed for that so it does it pass the needed tests to actually pass to the production level so uh, you should actually have those in mind so clear commit messages i have said earlier i think i think that's it so i will share you the i'll make sure to give out the slides for someone to share so if you have any questions clarifications before i started the demo uh, you are welcome i guess so anyone here need any clarity so I'll, I'll, I'll just be assuming that this is clear and everyone was following along so i'll show you the demos okay Okay, can you see the base code? Can you guys see it? Okay. Okay, thank you. So I have actually created uh let me let me just share you my whole screen. Okay. So the first thing you do is create a repository. So there are two ways to initialize repositories. So basically one of the thing is you can just use your command line and just git in it. So you can create your own folder and cd into that. Then uh, and uh, git in it. So basically, you can do that. So for convenience sake, I will just show you on uh, the, yeah, on this one. So, so, okay, so I will just create one on this one. So I gave, I gave out to you the uh, previous, Thing I've been working on for you as a reference. So this is basically the same step I took. I'll just say demo one. Okay. So for CI CD. So yeah, one of the things I want to show you here is you can almost always make it this public because you might be submitting on the weeks that that's coming probably on this week too so public is the way to go so add readme file so anyone coming to your repository should understand what you are trying to do should communicate well so if any anyone or even hiring manager couldn't understand what you guys have tried to do even they might see your commit history sometimes so having a good commit history could be better so also on the git ignore file uh, I think you can say you can search for Python and it will give you all the necessary things that should not be committed with uh, within the Python environment. So, for example, the package or dot environment files, it, it will give you the initial part. So, on the license part, uh, so maybe you you want uh, a license that is for anyone to contribute. So, Apache license could be it. So, you can browse. Any other license for your other projects so you can create repository just like this uh, so here you can see there is ci cd demo and everything is initialized so i think it's visible so i will be copying this 
the next thing I would do is uh, clone my GitHub repository. So uh, git clone. So I I have actually cloned it. So cd ci cd to I think one. This yeah. So I'm here now. I think I can do this and open my project. So basically, you want to open your project and start working on your uh, project. So it could be setting up any type of uh, projects. For example, uh, you might set up like a notebook for EDA part of the your project. So the EDA could be set up the any necessary package like such as pandas and everything. So I think I, I hope I hope it's clear until now. Am I clear? Okay. Okay. So if anything is confusing you, just feel free to let me know. So this is basically it. So yeah. Uh, and uh, I wanted to show you something on here. Okay, so we'll just be following along the other type. So the next thing I I, I hope yeah if everyone is actually having working along I guess so so probably you are doing some projects. So for example, I want to uh, like print Hello World, the easy and most popular one so i will just create app.py you can use the command line if you want but these are the easier parts so so i'll just for convenience sake i'll just copy what is out there so the app.py contents would be here so there you go so app.py is there so as i said earlier uh, like having 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 a com like continuous integration uh, best practices in mind could be here so i would also like might add requirement to text as i said earlier uh, have sorry have a, a a goal in mind so i'll say require requirements sorry. So, so on this requirement to text, I might have like one or two or even more than that uh, amount of uh, packages I might be needing to install. But for this, our current case, this is just an example. So uh, mostly you might be using EDA for that you need pandas. So basically you should add those pandas. If it is a specific version, you can, you can say like 1.2 or 2 point something. So this will install the latest version so yeah so one of the things i said earlier was like ha not having to push code and un until it is perfectly clear or perfectly or i mean like all, all of the things are uh, done so one of the things i you I, I could do or you could do could be any changes you made you could stage them so you can use the GitHub, the CMD again. So you can say uh, Git add. If you add dots, it will add all the uh, changes to a staging area. So I want to stage only app.py. So you can say app.py. So that's basically it. This is more convenient. So I staged app.py so I can commit like. Uh, so this is a new feature. Uh, my way. Of, or the best practice could be feature and add hello wallet. So this could be a commit history, but be more descriptive than I am right now. This is just for demo. So this is one change. So requirements on the requirements part added by pandas and transformers. So I could say package and could be more descriptive name. So package and add pandas in transformers so it could be like this so as you can see it says you need to stage so that means git add any as uh, to any 
the changes you made on your file to be uh, on the staged area. So staged changes you can actually commit now. So as you can see, we we have committed all our yeah. changes. So so this were the changes. So that means I basically did git add and git commits with uh, with it's because it is with uh, dy. This basically imit imitates the command line. So git push origin main or git push main. So uh, git push means you have to sync it with your online repo. So this is just uh, git is version controlling on my local computer. So you actually have to uh, push it, like upload it. Basically, sorry, basically it means uploading your code to GitHub for my, for someone to see. Just like you might upload any picture or anything in the uh, cloud. So I would say Git push. So it will push all my codes, and you can actually see the codes change it. So as you can see, there was no upload PI or requirements. So once it is pushed, it will just add upload PI and requirements. So that's basically it, I guess. Let me check. So yeah. So the next thing would be setting up the GitHub action. So you made your product or you you finished your uh, probably the first part of the uh, project. So you might need to create a GitHub workflow. So you can do what is command line again, any if you want. If you want, you can actually do that. So how do you do KDR workflow? So it would create git.github and sub folder on workflow. So yeah, so I can create ci.yaml. So there are two types of writing YAML, so YML and YAML. So you can do a post to recognize them. So basically what this what this does is uh, as I said earlier, it would just push whenever you whenever there is a change on the main branch of the code, uh, this script will run. This uh, the, the CI uh, deployment part. So what this basically does is I think you can see my screen. Are you guys following along or okay 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 thank you very much so yeah the, what this does is uh, there's a job and build so it runs on ubuntu like basically this is linux i think you you at least have to be somewhat familiar with the ubuntu or linux if you're deploying on ubuntu so windows probably not much i haven't seen it till now so it's probably is ubuntu or linux some, some kind so action checkout version 2 is basically means it doesn't mean your version 2 but uh, it's how they track their own checkout process so it checks out the main uh, uh, the main branch of your code and installs python so again it's not the python version version 2 the python version would be here in like 3.x means any uh, any version i think they are following the same version SEM ver, same ver, uh, type of uh, version control. So I think you can look the, those on. So it would probably be more than three. It will be more than uh, version three. So you can even add architecture if you want. So like architecture, like sit, if you have like, if you want it to run on x64, x36 or ARM, so you can basically uh, do it here, configure it. So after Python is there, Ubuntu is there. Like the, it's basically emulating your machine. So you actually need to run the package first. You have to actually upgrade pip. It's not necessary, but you can do that. So the next one is, as I said earlier, there are package needed to be installed. So this is a fresh install. As you can see, first we install Ubuntu, then Python. So we don't have the package. So basically, what you need to do is install the requirements. So yeah, the pandas, the transformers, or anything that is 
that your package is. So also, as I said earlier, there might be running tests. So this is a simple one. Echo means just display on the command line. So it will display running tests. And just if you want to add like some, I'll show you some advanced demo or some like semi-advanced demos on that too. So this basically it's like, uh, so let's copy paste this one, this workflow. So yeah. So again, I I actually changed some codes. So I actually have to commit this. So, or state the changes if you need it. So CI, CD, I could say CI, CD, uh, demo deploy on GitHub actions. So basically, I'll commit this. Oh, okay. So I didn't save this. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So if you have auto save, it might be not a problem. This might be. This might not be a problem. So uh, I'll just start again. See, I. I think I get. I get. I made a mistake. So I see the. You know, GitHub action. So uh, GitHub would actually do this for you. So I would sync the changes. So so basically, I did this. So uh, I want to show you. Uh, yeah. So whenever. So this is the. Thing I pushed. So it's, as you can see, there is a small loop that says pending. So it's basically doing the job what we are referencing on CI.yaml. So yeah, as you can see, it's running. So it sets up the job or the startup. So it checks out the code, sets up the Python. Uh, yeah, see, as you can see, it's like taking out uh, the code from uh, the repository setting up the authentication or something. So the Python would be installed. So in our case, it would be 3.12. So the dependencies are being installed. So as you can see, pandas here is from requirement line one. So transformers from requirement line two, they are being installed. So as you can see, I'm running tests. So this is a simple test. So I needed to output the parts as, 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 as you can see earlier. So it's it run the output saying running tests. We are not actually running this, so complete the job. So the build process is done. This is basically what it does. This is basically what it did uh, on every pull request you made uh, or in, on any pull changes you made on the main branch of the uh, the the main branch of the core base or the project or the github so yeah uh, you can check out the github actions page for references so if you have any questions right here yeah feel free to ask now so okay so moving along so I think we have touched about this one, the commits. So one thing to do is you probably want to be familiar with Docker. So, I, okay, sorry. So as I showed you earlier, so Docker, yeah. Uh, Docker defines a uh, workflow. For example, sometimes you might have a problem, like you might clone a, a project that was uh, had, that had a really good start and you want to try out on your machine. So you actually clone the project and find out that that's not, that was not working on your machine. So probably that the project was has been working on specific architecture on Linux or specific image or a specific uh, packages so sometimes there would not be that that would not work for you so 
basically you what what docker does is standardize uh, deployment in production in test environments like it's basically says but it works in my machine part like this uh, pods but it works in my machine so sometimes it might work on your machine so when you get it to another machine it might not work or on the server it might not work so what docker does is have the package all your necessary package from your uh, current system and it deploys the same thing on the server side so that basically standardizes your project so we can do that too like uh, github actions actually does that on the back side what we did is the same thing so we use the Ubuntu Linux, we install Python, like this is a structure we are taking. So basically, uh, this is in some ways in the backend, it's using Docker. So let's create a Docker file. So what we actually do is, we can do, we can again, we can do CLI, but for convenience, sorry, I'll just on the root folder, I'll add Docker file. So you can name it dot if it is backend dot backend or if it is a front end you want to create a docker file for front end you can say front end so that's just for easier convenience we just create a docker file so once your docker file is created you you have, you actually have to do the same thing you have been doing for the ci cd implementation of for github actions so yeah let's see this is Docker file, so okay. So, so as you can see here, uh, there is uh, Python 3.11 slim. So, this is the image the image that you would pull from the Docker Hub, Docker Hub repository where they can host the image. So, they will update only the Python. So that image it would have Python version 3.11. So that basically is where you would start from. If it is 3.11, you could start with 3.1. Working directory with, you can, like on the step two, you can create a working directory for slash app. So uh, on that Python, so basically the Python place would have uh, an Ubuntu underlying uh, running on Ubuntu, so uh, you'd copy the all your uh, your create a directory on your container, then copy all your data. For example, as you can see, I have requirements, readme, license, upload py, even the GitHub workflow. So I would copy those into the app. So as I said earlier, you have to install this for your application to work, uh, be it for backend or on anything. So the requirements should be installed. This is basically a reproduction of what you have been doing previously. So expose 80. So I added this because maybe you might need it in the future because there would be server front end some kind of thing. So you need to expose that from the Docker, uh, from the Docker process to your outside environment. So it's some kind of virtual machine, uh, your uh, Docker. So you have to actually do that. So environment files, some, some, sometimes you might need API keys, for example, OpenAI or different API keys might be needed. So you have to actually give to the environment. So finally, you have to, you have to say where it is launching, where your code is launching. So in our case, it would be app.py. So Python means Python 3.11, basically your app.py should be compatible. So your Python would run the app API. So on our case, what we want to do when we run this, uh, so we, it will return hello world and print the hello world. So that's what basically what we wanted to the Docker file to do. So I will save this one. Again, when I, when I push my changes, there would be a deployment. So basically uh, what you would be doing is deploying. So Docker add, Docker file to run dot py. So yeah. So I'll sync my changes if need be. So you can sync. So whenever I, there is a push, there would be 
and are run. So one thing I want to tell you is always uh, have a new branch while you are working. So you can check out a new uh, new branch, create a new branch. You can create a name or you can do with command line. So git, git checkout, check, sorry, check out dash b. So you can check out whatever branch you want. So if you are, uh, if you are creating feature for let's say a web app, web app implementation, you can say web app uh, something descriptive. So whenever you push a code, it wouldn't be on the main; it would be on the branch the, that that was checked out lastly from main. So this is how you do things. So uh, do you have you guys have any questions here? Any concerns? Sorry, any questions here before we actually deploy or test the Docker file? Okay, I hope it is clear. So you can refer this to this one. As I said earlier, I think this makes sense. So one thing you need to have is Docker installation. So you have to check your Docker installations by using this one. So I have Docker installed in my machine. So yeah, uh, you, the next thing is build your image. So the image should be built before it is being run. So you have to comp building means the same thing, like uh, like pulling the Python, for example, needs uh, internet. So Python basically runs on uh, Ubuntu or other uh, Slim or other types of Linux. So you have to build those images. So yeah, so okay. We can build maybe what is it say, okay. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll fix it. So what it does is builds uh, an image name with the name. So and also the build means specifies the current directory. So okay, I'll try to rerun the demo. I don't know why it's not working. So the curve builds. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I I forgot the dots. So yeah, Docker build dash t ci cd demo. So I'll I'll be this is the name ci cd demo would be the name for my uh, Docker build. So the entire this means I am in ci cd demo one, which means I am here. So if you are if you are saying dots, it would be the entire uh, repository or the entire code base you have or the entire file structure or files you have here will be built by those image. So by this uh, Docker, uh, Docker code, you are uh, setting it. So basically, it would start pulling. So as you can see from Docker IO, it is like pulling this Python image or other. So it's running the co it's copy. Uh, it's running the install requirements. So it's basically doing what you are saying to do. So after build process is done, you can actually say Docker run. So Docker run means run my image. So let me post it. So as I said earlier, I built, I think, CICD, CICD demo. So CICD demo would be my uh, name. So you can reference it to any name. So uh, what it does is D is for background. So I want you to see, I want you guys to see it in action. So since it will, it won't be running for always because as you can see, our app will be our excuse once. So it just returns hello world. So what it does is it would go about the Docker file and execute this. So, so basically what it does is this one, Python upload py. So if your application is getting bigger and bigger, you can actually uh, change this one. For example, in FastAPI, you might actually deploy it on UVCorn. So probably uh, if you're deploying server, it might not stop there. So the server might be listening. So this is one-time execution for app. So 
I'll be running the Docker. So as you can see, I hope this is visible. So yeah, so it says hello world. So I think our Docker file is currently working great. I think it works. So basically what it is is a simple hello world. So it, is, it excuse the update viewer. So yeah. So for the expose part, I want to, I forgot to tell you is dash p means eighty eighty. So this eighty uh, port eighty is mapped to your current uh, local machine to eighty. So whenever you want to access the inside of Docker port eighty, you might want to access your own eighty. You can change that at any time, or you can change that while deploying. So yeah, the other ones are Docker PS just to see what is running as you can see it's not we are not running anything so it just executes once and uh, exits so we are not running anything so we cannot stop any container so if we have any running containers that you have for example as i said earlier servers might be running so if you want to stop it docker stop the container ID. so yeah so the next thing is i could see the image image so docker image at least i could say uh, i think all docker image that that is running or not running i could use so okay i think uh, yeah i think it's not showing up so uh okay i will sorry about that good so yeah docker image so one thing you could do is docker image dash dash help so you can see uh see that list of images that we can see docker image list docker image so you can you can do that so sorry Okay, so uh, I think we'll clean up. Yeah, let's just try to clean up with this code. Okay. Demo. Okay. Okay, so I think. Uh, Maybe it's not there. So you can explore it using the demo or the LS or LS all if your container is running. So I think this is basically it. You can reference the documents have the references in mind. So basically it's, I think so. So if you have any questions, you can actually uh, have it forward and I can try to answer. Okay, uh, Alazar, you can. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I had uh, two questions. Uh, the first thing, uh, when uh, dockerizing your project, if there's a .yaml file, in order to yeah. dockerize that file based on that uh, YAML configuration, do I always have to use Docker Compose or the Docker command uh, alone uh, will uh, work? And the second being, for example, uh, for unit testing, uh, whenever we put a workflow for that unit test, whenever you merge a branch or you push to GitHub, that test will run. Uh, for example, for linter, the same. What will happen if I create a Docker workflow? Uh, what exactly will happen? Uh, I don't see that uh, Docker being uh, Docker won't be deployed on uh, GitHub. It's just uh, you set it up on your local computer and you push it to the Docker Hub. Uh, yeah. I'm confused on how Docker workflow works. Uh, so basically, what CI/CD does is uh, like yeah, there is no. Uh, point in like merging those two right now. So the CI/CD part for GitHub Actions it is a different type of Docker. So they might be doing their own type of Docker or even using 
the same docker way are actually using i'm not sure on that but what it basically does is use the same workflow for do docker just to automate your tests before pushing to the main branch so what i did here is i can execute the docker file at any time uh, on our uh, on our demo like i can i can execute this file at any time so but not this one this one is this one is being run uh, whenever there is a changed code on the main or whenever there is a pull request on the main so uh, before the scores are merged onto the main this ci.yaml file would execute so the way it executes as you can as you said it could be on docker so so basically it's the workflow as you can see the workflow is is mostly similar with uh, how you deploy on docker so for example you installed ubuntu you installed uh, the python 3.x version and you check out your code that basically means copy all the code to the ubuntu workspace that i have uh, so that's that's basically it so uh, one thing you can do on this one is linting testing as you said uh, linting could be a potential one probably it will let you deploy i actually didn't deploy uh, to any other like i i, I didn't see any uh, ci cd amazon ci cd pipelines or github actions that actually deploy to different uh, workspaces so the one thing you could do is deploy to some uh, some place for example on aws so it could test once these tests are uh, passed it could deploy to aws that's basically what is what is needed so uh, you can actually uh, include that on your workflow so if you want uh, another granular uh, like uh some kind of uh, power on your uh, code or want to execute on your local machine even docker hub you want to ship it there uh, docker file would be a way to go so there there is another file called docker compose that composes different docker files different uh, deployments into one so i i hope this is clear i i love that this is, is that is that clear uh, yes, the second question is very clear. The first one, so uh, basically, uh, whether uh, there's a, whether you use Docker Compose or Docker, the .yaml file is executed, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, CI.yaml, you mean CI.yaml, right? Uh, yes, uh, the configuration file you use for Docker. Uh, uh, when, uh, previously, I saw that uh, when using Docker, you set up your own uh, uh, ports and other uh, configurations. But so you meant this one, right? This one will be executed when we deploy this one, or when we deploy the Docker file. You meant CI.yaml would be executed whenever we deploy this one, though I mean Docker file? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yes, uh, basically, uh, I, I understand now. I was confused myself. Yeah, those, uh, those two are totally different. CI.yaml or is whenever there is a code being pushed on the main or there is, or there is a pull request on the main that, uh, for example, you created a branch, you are working on your branch on, a, on some kind of feature, then you want, to, you want to push it to the main. So you ask for pull request if, if that is a collaborative environment. Even if it is your own code, you might create a pull request whenever you're done so uh, before it merges the things it will let you know that this test has passed this is test has passed or this this test has failed so it will give you a sense of uh, what to actually uh, change so if those tests haven't passed uh, like you have to actually look why it is not passed because in the first place you have you have put those tests because it's needed for production environment or even dev, uh, those need those pass those tests need to pass before they are merged to the main. So the Docker file is a different one. Docker mm -hmm. file is like you create your own image 
you can probably create your own compose dot docker compose dot yaml file to compose different images uh, like you have you have the actually the say on on that okay uh, thank you uh, i understood clearly thanks for the uh, explanation uh, no problem it's okay so Ma mama mohammed kabbada i think i always get confused in understanding docker image in docker container can you clarify for us so docker image is a single image or it could be like as i said earlier it could be a single image for example as you as you say as you can see let me show you the docker file previous our our demo so it says from python 3.11 slim so it's not actually just python 3.11 slim so in order to have uh, python 3.11 slim installed you actually have to have operating system behind it so basically you have to install ubuntu the kernels different things have to be installed so it's just uh, abstracting for you those things so if you closely see the python 3.11.yaml uh, image it probably is uh, yeah yeah so it probably is pulling ubuntu from the docker hub so it's, it pulled docker hub it pulled python from the python uh, online repo so that's basically what it does so images are it could be one standalone image or you are building onto other image. so our project is building onto python image so what it does is it this is i'm creating my own image so the other one is container so a container means have different products like even the the name suggests that the container have different things inside of it so in docker container so i i might have a docker image for my backend file backend project or the core base for my backend the code base for my front end or different kinds of apis so the docker container would actually aggregate those and shape those on uh, like uh, in one docker compose file or in a container format so image is the this building block i don't want to say building block but a smaller part of the container and uh, container is the group of an image probably so i hope i am clear mama mohammed so yeah okay so uh, so i might not be giving you all the information right now uh, i'm also learning so everyone every one of you should be actually learning on that so it should actually refine your knowledge on that or like by, by actually practicing so deploy some some of your projects so you will have like 12 weeks of intensive training so whenever you have time uh, actually it's necessary that you actually deploy so use ci cd pipeline use uh, docker to to build your backend frontend uh, or even another types of uh, like automations so so that anyone could actually deploy your code easily instead of just configuring everything so yeah i think that's it for today uh, if you guys have any questions like i feel free to forward it i guess i guess like we, we can wrap up here we actually have it beyond time i think i think it's on time so any other questions i should or concerns okay okay thank you very much so good night thank you